That's awesome. <laughs> we like that. I am Iron Man. Good day and welcome back to TMAC FPV. Your home for your journey to better FPV fun, flights, and racing stuff. This is the second in our two-part series of how to build an FPV 5-inch race drone. If you missed the first part, no worries. Just click on the pop-up link in the upper right-hand corner of this video to check it out. And as in the last video, there's a clickable, hyperlinked table of contents in the video description below so that you can basically jump to any section of the video you're interested in simply by clicking on the timestamp. In the last video, we rebuilt the X220 from the base plate up and helped it shed 20% of its weight. In today's video, we'll be going over both the Betaflight and the BL Heli Suite setups for the quad, progressively working through each tab of Betaflight as well as BL Heli and highlighting the options which we've changed from the defaults. We'll finish up, hopefully, with the maiden flight of our rebuilt X220. Let's get to it. Okay, the first thing that I like to do whenever I get a new quadcopter or I'm building a new quadcopter with a uh, new flight controller is to go ahead and get the uh, what's called the dump, D-U-M-P, uh, of the flight controller's original configuration through Betaflight. To do that, you connect the USB to the uh, flight controller, turn it on, you go to your CLI tab, which is your command line, and down here in the command line, you just type the word dump. And that'll give you a dump of all the lines of code that are currently on the flight controller. Now, I've already gone ahead and done this, but what you want to do is from the word dump that you typed in, just go ahead and copy all of this information by highlighting it, copy, and then go into a Word document and paste it into your Word document and save it somewhere on your computer so that when you make the changes that are upcoming, if you need to revert back to the original configuration of the flight controller when you initially got it, you've got that information saved on your computer. And that's all that this is right here uh, that we're doing in the CLI. And there's one more command that you can type in. This command, which I'm about to show you, uh, called diff all, will give you all of the profiles and rate profile changes from default. You can type diff all, and let's see where we type that in. Scroll up. Here's where we typed it in. So this is all the information on all the profiles and rate profiles that are changed from the defaults. And as you can see, it gives it uh, it's giving rate profile one, two, all those. If you do do diff all, it's showing you all the parameters on all the profiles and rate profiles that are changed from the defaults. Okay, having done that, we're going to go ahead and flash the flight controller with the current version of Betaflight. Okay, so now what we want to do is flash the latest version of Betaflight firmware onto the flight controller. And to do that, we hold down this boot button, which I'm pointing to right here, at the same time we power on the quadcopter. So I'm going to go ahead and hold this button down at the same time I power it on, and then we'll see that uh, the quadcopter comes up in DFU mode on Betaflight. And there you can see it came up in DFU mode. So now we can go to Firmware Flasher, and ordinarily it would say load firmware online, which I would do. At this point, I've already loaded the firmware online by clicking this button. And then we go to the target that we want to load it up on, which is our CL Racing F4. The version for the CL Racing F4 that we want is the latest version, the latest stable version, which is 354 with a full chip erase. And then we go ahead and flash the firmware. It's erasing what's currently on the flight controller. Now it's flashing the flight controller. And then it's verifying. 
and the programming was successful. So we can disconnect and then reconnect. This time without holding down the boot button on the flight controller, we are connected. And the first thing we want to do is once again type in the word dump into your command line or CLI. And we're going to copy and paste all of this stuff uh, from the latest default version of 354 Betaflight after the word dump, which we typed. So here's the word that we typed. And the version now is 354, dated 17 December 2018. Betaflight 4.0 is supposed to be coming out uh, this month, I believe. But uh, we'll, we'll go with this for now. So what we do is cut and paste all of this into our Word document and save it somewhere on our computer before we make any changes to it. And that way we have it for reference should anything go wrong. Okay, let's get started. We're going to start out by plugging in the USB into our quadcopter and connecting. And this is the Betaflight setup. Uh, this, these are the tabs over here on the left that we'll, we'll be going through most of them. Uh, if some of them don't apply, then we'll just skip over them. Uh, we're going to start off in the setup tab. And this is where you can see your 3D model simulation in Betaflight. And you can check the directions of your uh, quadcopter to make sure that the flight controller is set up uh, properly. If I pitch forward, it pitches forward. If I pitch back, the model pitches back. If I roll left, model rolls left. If I roll right, model rolls right. All those are good things. If I yaw left, yaws left. And if I yaw right, it yaws right. So sitting on a flat table, what you can do at this point is actually calibrate the accel accelerometer. And if it's off at all, you should see this 3D model uh, leveling out. So let's go ahead and calibrate the accelerometer and watch this 3D model. See, it moved very slightly. So now the accelerometer has been calibrated and that's pretty much all that we're going to do on this setup tab and next we'll go to the ports tab. So on ports we go to the ports tab and we know based on the flight controller pinout diagram and the pads that we soldered the various connections to that our serial RX is going to be on UART1 so we go ahead and toggle that and that smart audio is going to be on UART 4. So we go ahead and toggle that and we save and reboot. And go back to ports and make sure that those are saved. Okay. We also know that we've connected our telemetry from our RXSR receiver to UART 3. So what we need to do is go ahead and take a look at what pin UART 3 is on. We go to the CLI and we do that by typing resource and we're looking for TX3 resource. So where is TX3? TX3 is on B10. So what we want to do is we want to make that soft serial 1 for our telemetry. So in order to do that, we go back to our command line and we type resource space serial underline TX space 11, where 11 is just the numerical designation for soft serial 1. And we type space B10. B10 is already assigned to Serial TX3. Serial TX3 is now disabled. Resource is set to B10. So we type save. And we go back to our CLI just to make sure. Resource. And we're looking for soft serial somewhere. Serial TX11, which is soft serial 1, is now B10, which is what we want. So now to enable the soft serial you'll notice soft serial is nowhere to be found here that's because we have, need to go to configuration click on soft serial toggle that save and reboot now we should go back to ports and see soft serial 1 and on that 
We want smart port. Save and reboot. Let's go back to ports to verify it. Soft serial 1, smart ports enabled. Telemetry output on soft serial 1. We have TBS smart audio on UART 4, and UART 1 is our serial RX. So that'll do it for ports tab. Okay, so at this point we can go ahead into our configuration tab and for our Ori 32 4-in-1 ESC which supports DSHOT 1200 we're actually going to use DSHOT 600 we're going to go 8K 8K here craft name we're going to make TMAC FPV X220 receiver is going to be serial based receiver S bus. We want telemetry. We're going to enable air mode. We do want anti gravity on and the dynamic filter on. Our board alignment uh, is just from the normal board configuration that the flight controller was intended to be. We didn't rotate it on any axis. We want to change our arming angle to 180 and what this will allow us to do is to be able to arm the quadcopter no matter what orientation it is in. If it gets stuck in a tree uh, we might be able to arm it and wiggle it free by uh, using throttle pitch and roll and I think that's going to do it for this configuration tab so we're going to save and reboot and let's go back in just to make sure everything's saved properly D shot 600 8 8 craft name serial receiver S bus all right we're good to go Move on to power and battery. All right, let's go to our power and battery tab. Minimum cell voltage is currently at 3.3. We'll keep it there. Let's do the warning cell voltage at 3.4, and we'll leave everything else the same. Save, and it saved it correctly. So we're done with the power and battery tab. Okay, now we're going to go into our fail-safe tab over here. If you don't see this tab, then you need to enable expert mode. I disabled it there, and the tab went away. And you can permanently enable expert mode just by clicking on this box up here, which is what I've done. So we go into failsafe. A couple things to know about failsafe is that there are two stages. These are the settings for stage one. Uh, stage two settings uh, kick off after a predetermined time, which you set. I'm going to, uh, and these numbers over here says one equals one tenth of a second. So I'm going to set that to five for half a second. And I'm going to leave everything the same except throttle auto means roll pitch and yaw to center and throttle low it'll drop the throttle down hold means maintain the last good value received so I'm going to set that to hold which means if I have a minor glitch in the uh, reception of my controlling signals for half a second it will keep the throttle at the last good value received for half a second at which time stage two will kick off and it will drop the quadcopter will drop which is what I want I don't want it to fly away I don't want to try to land it or anything like that so if I've got a minor glitch the throttle is going to keep at the last good value received for half a second and if it's still not receiving the proper signals then the quadcopter will drop that half a second gives me a chance to recover or it to recover the signal which was initially lost. Save and reboot. And that's going to do it for our failsafe tab. Next we go to PID tuning. Okay, we're going to go ahead with the PID tuning tab. And for now, we're going to leave the PIDs as the default. We're going to leave everything as the default, except I'm going to set up three different rate profiles. For the first rate profile, I'm going to make this 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 27 
0 0.72. Then I'm going to change this RC Expo to 0 0.2 for each of these. When I do that, take a look at how the graphs change over here. 0 0.2. Saw the red and the green lines jump up. 0 0.2. And what that actually does is 0 0.2. 0. There we go. It flattens things out in the middle. We're going to leave everything else the same for now. Click Save. I'm going to go to Profile 2. And I'm going to change Profile 2 Super Rates to 0 0.68. 0 0.48. Zero point seven two. I'm going to change these back to zero point two zero and zero point two zero. And on this rate profile two, we're going to leave everything else as default for now. Click save. Profile three. I'm going to change this to zero point seven eight. Zero point seven eight. and 0 0.72 and change these to 0 0.2 and we're going to leave everything else as default here and click save and then what we're going to do is we're going to flip back to profile 1, 2, and 3 taking a look at these numbers make sure they were saved properly And they were. So we are good to go with PID tuning and our three rates right now. All right, now we want to go into our receiver tab. And the main reason for being in the receiver tab now is we want to check to make sure that our roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle channels are working properly. So when I move the throttle channel or the throttle stick on the transmitter, the throttle channel should move. When I move the yaw, the yaw should move. When I move the pitch, pitch should move and when I move roll roll should move all of these minimum points should be at a thousand maximum points should be at two thousand mid points should be at fifteen hundred if they're not that way in the following diagrams we'll go ahead and demonstrate how you can make those changes to the minimum endpoints the maximum endpoints and the mid points of your channels okay to change the mid max endpoints and the mid channel point of each of your channels you go to your outputs page which is page 7 to 12 on my Tyrannus QX uh, 7 and you scroll down to the channel that you're working on either the roll pitch throttle or yaw in this case I've highlighted the yaw channel hit enter on that and then select edit and you'll get to this screen then you can scroll down to the highlighted area in this case minimum uh, and while you've got your yaw stick set all the way to the left or at the minimum position, you're looking at the Betaflight channel screen for yaw to see what number it is to actually verify whether it's a thousand or not or not. If it's 998 or a thousand and four instead of a thousand, then you want to click on this minimum value when it's highlighted and use your scroll wheel to scroll up or down while you're watching the Betaflight screen to get it at a thousand. And then once it's at a thousand on the Betaflight screen, this number may not be 98, negative 98.2. For you, it may be something different. But once you get it at a thousand on the Betaflight screen, then uh, stop scrolling, pr press the exit button, and you'll exit out of this selection. And do the same thing for the maximum value. Scroll down, click on it, and while the uh, yaw is pr stick is all the way over to the right or to the maximum value, you want to make sure that it, the Betaflight channel screen is showing 2,000. If it's showing 1996 or 2004, you obviously want to change it to 2,000. By clicking on this value, it'll blink and you want to use your scroll wheel to change the value of this number while you're watching the channel in Betaflight 
to get it to the point of 2000. Once it's at 2000, then you exit out of this value and it will be set for you. Prior to doing these two, the min and max, which you probably want to make sure is that your PPM center, your center channel value is set at 1500. If it's not set at 1500, then do this PPM center first uh, because once you change this, it'll probably change your min and max uh, values as well. So do the PPM center first, uh, get it at 1500 using the same methodology that I just described for these two. And once it's at 1500, then go ahead and set your min and max endpoints for each of your channels. The yaw, throttle, pitch, and roll. Now back to the receiver tab. Since I've got an RXSR receiver that supports telemetry, I want to display my received signal strength indicator or RSSI value on the appropriate channel and in order to determine that I've set up the necessary channel parameters in my Tyrannus QX7 in the following manner. You go to the inputs page of your Tyrannus, in my, in my case Tyrannus QX7, go to an empty input line and go ahead and click on the input line, input RSI for the input field, put your scale at 100, and your weight at 100, then go to mixer, go to the mixer and find a channel that you're going to use for your RSI input, set it up as in the following manner. In my case I used channel 12, which is actually aux 8 according to Betaflight because the first four channels are reserved for aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. So my RSI is going to be on aux 8. So with that information, we go back to our receiver tab, go to our RSSI channel, instead of disabled, we want to click on it, and go to aux 8, save, and now you see our RSSI signal on aux 8 moving up and down. I can take the transmitter and move it across the room, and you'll see it go down in value. I can bring it back closer to the quad and you can see it go back up in value. So our RSSI is on aux 8 and it's working properly now. And that's going to do it for our receiver tab. Next we'll go into modes. Okay now we're going to go to our modes tab and we're going to set up arm and I've already set it up on my transmitter. Uh, when I flip the switch, two position switch, watch this blip. It goes over here so I want to make sure that this is bar is over that. So it's unarmed, armed. I'm going to click save and then I'm going to set up three modes on a three position switch. Angle mode is here. Move the bar over the blip. Horizon mode is right here. The bar is already over it. We're just going to shrink it down. And then for acro mode, if it's not angle or horizon, it's in acro. So we flip it to acro and you see the blip move over here. So we have angle, horizon, acro. And we're going to hit save. And then for beeper, sit on a momentary switch. Beeper's not activated. The beeper's activated over here. So we need to move the bar over here, active, and hit save. And that's all we're going to do for now so we can move on to the adjustments tab. Okay next we're going to go to the adjustments tab and this is where we're going to put our three rates that we set up onto the three position switch. We're going to enable these and we're going to select aux 7 just because that's the normal setup that I usually do. That would be aux 7, aux 7. And then this is going to be rate profile selection, rate profile selection, rate profile selection, aux 7, aux 7, aux 7. And in the first case, which is our race rate. It's going to be there.
practice rate it's going to be here freestyle rate it's going to be over here and we're going to click save I'm going to go back to modes I'm going to go to adjustments make sure everything's saved properly and right now we are on race practice freestyle and that'll do it for adjustments and next we're going to go to motors all right now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our motors tab in beta flight and determine if the motors are spinning properly when you do this always make sure that your props are off of your motors and you click I understand the risks associated with this and we've gone ahead and made a little Excel spreadsheet which is going to be useful to us here in a little bit because when we move these sliders sliders one two three and four one two three and four we're going to log which motor is actually spinning because when we move slider one motor one should spin which is this one up here in the diagram is the motor numbers one two three and four and this is the direction they spin are supposed to spin normally motors one and four spin clockwise and motors two and three normally spin counterclockwise so we're gonna log which motor spins when I move each slider number and we're also going to document which direction it spins we're gonna call that spin so when I move slider one motor one should spin it doesn't motor four spins so we go over here slider one is motor four which direction was motor four spinning it's spinning counterclockwise which is incorrect for motor four but when we change to in order to change the direction of the motor spin we're gonna to have to do that in BL heli suite but for now we're just gonna document that okay what about when we uh, spin up slider 2 motor 2 actually does spin but it is spinning clockwise and if you look up here it should be spinning counterclockwise so two two and it is spinning clockwise and then if we raise the slider for number three number three is spinning which is good and it is spinning clockwise which is incorrect so when we do three three and it is spinning clockwise which is incorrect and then when we spin up slider four slot motor one spins motor one spins counterclockwise which is incorrect so basically we have to swap motors one and four in beta flight and we have to change the spin direction on all of them in BL heli so in order to swap motors one and four in beta flight we have to take a look at what pin number is associated with them in order to do that we need to go to the CLI and type resource motor one is on B00 so we go over here and we say B00 and motor four is on A02 A02. 
So then we go back down here and we say resource motor 4 B00. Resource motor 4 B00. Resource is now set to B00. Motor 1 is disabled. And then we say resource motor 1 A02. Motor 1, A02, resource is set to A02, and then we type save. And then when we go back to our motors tab, when we fire up slider 1, motor 1 should spin. When we fire up motor 4, motor 4 should spin. 2 and 3 we didn't change. 2 and 3. So now all of our motors are mapped correctly. The spin direction is incorrect on all of them. So we need to change the spin direction to match this normally. Or if we... That would be my Tyrannus QX7 talking to me, Amber. If you want to have them spin, all spin the opposite direction so that dirt doesn't get into the camera, then we would want motor 1 to spin counterclockwise, which it does. We would want motor 4 to spin counterclockwise, which it does. And we would want 2 and 3 to spin clockwise, which they do. So in this case, it's just that our motors are reversed to look like this based on the configuration tab where motor 1 is now counterclockwise, motor 4 is now counterclockwise, motors 2 and 3 are clockwise. So we don't have to change motor direction in BL Heli, we just changed this we just toggled motor direction is reversed in beta flight so you can actually have the motor spin all the normal way or have all of the motors reversed depending upon what your preference is uh, if you're doing filming with camera drones or freestyle stuff if you reverse the motor spin as we've got it here then it keeps debris out of the camera's uh, lens in essence and also it has the added benefit of if you hit a branch or something like that the props are spinning away from it so perhaps you won't get stuck in trees and branches as often so what the setup we've got here with this now is good so we can close this out and I don't need to save it we do need to save this and and we're good to go for the motors tab. Now we're going to go to the OSD tab. Auto is fine. Let's set the RSSI value. Where'd it go? Here it is. I want this in the upper right hand corner. Turn that logo off for now. Main battery voltage. I want down here in the lower right. Uh, timer 2 is fly time. That's, the, that's what I want. Down here in the lower left. Craft name. I want up in the center. VTX channel. I want in the upper left. I want the warnings enabled, like low voltage. I do want the ESC temp. I'll go ahead and put that underneath the RSSI. We're going to save it. Go back to OSD. Everything seems to be saved good. 
so we're good with the OSD tab. Okay, before we get into BL Hilly, we want to use the ESC beacon tone as a lost quad buzzer since our CL Racing F4 Mini flight controller doesn't have an external beeper pad that we could solder an external beeper onto. Uh, so in order to set up the ESC beacon tone as our beeper, we do that as a combination of steps we've already done in the modes tab in conjunction with toggling a switch in the configuration uh, tab and we'll go through that now okay and, and since we've gone into the modes section and we've set our uh, beeper mode up here to toggle uh, on and off on a uh, momentary switch where the slider bar is over the top of the blip when we toggle the switch we actually need to go into configuration and make sure that our D-Shot beacon configuration is set up appropriately. I've already got it set for, to 3 here by toggling this. If I change, let's go ahead and change the tone to 5 and see what that sounds like. Well first let's go back to 3 and I'll let you listen to what tone 3 sounds like. Okay, tone 1. We'll save and reboot. We'll go back to configuration and show that it's on tone one now. See it's a lower tone and then if we go to tone five, well we don't like that. I'm gonna go back to three. <laughs> Save and reboot, tone three. That's the tone I want right there. So after you set the uh, beeper on, on a aux channel in your modes section uh, where the blip is underneath the slider bar, you need to come into uh, the D-Shot uh, beacon configuration in the uh, configuration tab and set the RX set toggle to on and choose your beacon tone. Uh, you also got another option here to set up the beeper to beep when the transmitter is either turned off or the signal is lost and it's going to repeat until the transmitter is okay which means it's constant beeping until the transmitter is uh, connected again with the quadcopter. If you have that constant beeping, I'm afraid that it might actually burn out the motors eventually. So we're not going to toggle that on. We're just going to keep this RX set option to toggle on with a beacon tone of three. Okay, now we're going to go into a BL Heli 32 suite, connect our quad via USB, change our COM port to COM3, connect, plug in our battery. Click on check. Our current rev is 32.6, so we're going to go ahead and check to see if that is the most recent revision by clicking on Flash BL Heli. Firmware rev 32.6, latest available BL Heli 32 revision is 32.6, so we do not need to flash the latest firmware of BL Heli 32 because we currently have it on our ESC. So we're going to cancel this and go to our next step. Okay, we might as well go ahead and play some music, right? Let's do this. Uh, first of all, we're going to connect. And then we're going to plug in our battery. Read setup. Okay. Okay. So let's go into music configurator. Music on. And then... Mr. Rocks Wolf has got a uh, website where he does the tones for various songs. You can go to his website, and I'm gonna take. I'm gonna use Iron Man. So I need to set the gen length to 11, interval to one, and paste these notes into ESC one. So 11, one. Let's go. 11, one. Paste the notes. paste. I'm going to save this as Iron Man ESC. Save. Okay. Uh, and apply music. Do I want to write the music parameters now to each individual ESC? Yes. Write was okay. 
Good. So now we're going to go to ESC2. ESC2 is not good. Music on. 11. 1. This is for ESC2, so we go back here for ESC2. Copy. Paste. And we're going to write the setup for ESC2. And then we're going to go ESC3. Music on. Interval 11. 1. ESC3. Copy, paste, and right setup. And I think ESC4 we've already done. We're going to do it again. Paste, apply music, right setup. Okay. Okay, so that's ESC1. Music's on. ESC2. Music's on. ESC3. Music's on. ESC4. Music's on. So we're going to disconnect. That's awesome. <laughs> we like that. I am Iron Man. It's fly time.